Talk to us just a little bit about what God is doing in Jerusalem. We can talk politics in, in, the, in the long term. That really doesn't amount to much. What God is doing really is what's important. What is he doing in your neck of the woods there in Israel? Oh, uh, Jan, this is what a great question. We are seeing a hunger and an open heart uh, on the hearts of Muslims. The, the concept today is the secret to, to sharing Jesus is to share with people the misconceptions about Christ mm. rather than debating people into heaven. God today is moving in the hearts of Muslims in Jerusalem, in the West Bank, all the way to Gaza. And I have the privilege to go to Gaza in Jan. We have underground church movement there of believers who love the Lord, who are suffering, who are paying a price, and even in other hostile areas in the West Bank. And what I'm seeing is people are fed up and tired of violence and killing and hate and animosity that is related to their to their childhood faith, which is the Islamic mentality. They, they want to break free. It's just such a joy to be able to have our ministry, myself and, and those that, that I've had the privilege to train, to be in the midst of them, to, to, to explain the truth, to share Jesus with them. And, and all we, we just want to do more for the kingdom of God. People on the Jewish side, Jan, people on the Jewish side, they're asking the questions of, we've tried everything. We've tried traditions. We've tried um, works. We've tried actions. We've, you know, we've tried all these things, and usually they come out with a half-empty heart, or, mm. or just an empty heart, or just it just works and traditions, and and they're seeking for something more real, something more. They, they want life. They want joy. And I'm seeing that because they see me as an Arab who is an Israeli, who is an Arab, who is considered to be a Palestinian as well by, by others because of me growing up in the West Bank. They say, why do you love us as Jews? What do you, you, you love us. You've never asked anything from us. You never want anything from us. I, I am in debt to God through the Jewish people because out of you, the blessings came, which is Jesus Christ, the Messiah. And what I'm teaching Jews to, to do is to rather than shun away from the name of Jesus rather or be scared away from him, to actually see him as as a figure that actually gives a positiveness to the to the Jewish name because he is revered by by many religions because he's revered by connecting him to Judaism one we, we are we are connecting him to his true identity and number two it's an added plus to Judaism and that's just be, that's just a new discussion right now that I'm having with Jews because they are searching Jan yeah. and and then thirdly what we're also seeing in Jerusalem is we're seeing more and more signs. You know, I have the privilege, and I can't, for security reasons, I can't give you all the details. You and I, we talk about it all off of the air, but on the air I can. But I have the privilege to meet with many government officials from the Israeli side and some from the, from the Palestinian side as well. And in my discussion, I'm learning things. For example, this, this Leviathan thing, which is mentioned in Revelations 12, 13, and 14. Israel, several years back, commissioned the most sophisticated submarine in the world, and they called it Leviathan. And actually, Rome is the shores and the seas of Israel in the same place where Revelation says that this beast will roam the oceans. I mean, it talks about the seven horns. And if you look at the submarine, it has seven, seven big uh, the, the barrels, wherever the missiles and, and the bullets leave from there, seven, seven horns on it. I mean, it, we are seeing things. And there's so many sure. other things that we don't have time to talk about of seeing signs come to pass. Well, you know, Stephen... And I live in, you know, that I live in the Twin Cities area, and and we've got about 100,000 Somalis here. And for that matter, we've got Syrian refugees pouring into America. Many, many cities are becoming the homeland for these fleeing Syrian refugees. And they're not all Syrian. Some are even Pakistani. Some are Iraqis and, and others from your neighborhood there, Middle East. And I know several who have Muslims as neighbors. I even know some who have extended relatives who are Muslims. Can you just give us a quick lesson on how they can share their faith with their Muslim neighbor, extended family member, co-worker, anybody that is in their life? who believes the Islamic faith? Y yes, Jan. The best way and, and the fastest way to do it in such a short time is, one, you have to humanize Muslims. They, they are normal human beings mm. that just see supernatural things differently than you do. By seeing them as a human being, you begin to understand that, one, they, because they're human beings, just like you, they can be wrong. Just like you, they can be at fault. Just like you, they have differences in culture and traditions and so forth. And that's usually the hardest thing is a lot of times I see when I talk to foreigners in America, pastors, they just, they, they're afraid of, of Muslims and it comes down to they just don't understand them. They don't understand that they come from different concepts, different mentality. So one, you have to see them as human beings. You have to. They might be, they might be extremists and fanatical and so forth. 
thankfully, most of them don't, don't take action in that extremism they have, but it's there. But you have to see them as human beings. Number two, fast food evangelism does not work, Jen. It has to be relationship, relationship, okay. relationship, relationship. You have to invite them over to your home. You have to go over their home. In fact, it's been proven, and, and I speak from experience. It's been proven whenever you get close to them, what it does, it actually it reminds them that 90% of what they thought about you was wrong. 90% sure. of the, the, the false information they've been fed growing up it, it's not true. We have, and this is a new teaching that I'm doing right now. You have to understand there's a difference between Islam versus moderate Muslims. Today, over 70%, 75% of Muslims in this world are looked at as moderate Muslims by true Islam itself, which means these are moderate Muslims that just, that are traditional or cultural. They call them, we call them cultural Muslims, Jan, which means to them, Islam is something they picked up from family and relatives, and they just like the thought of Islam. But it's funny because when you get to begin to peel the onion. Many, some will become atheist Muslims mm -hmm. or even homosexual Muslims, which all these things are opposing to Islam and even punishable by death. So it just shows you that they're just they're cultural Muslims and not true Muslims by faith. In fact, by Islam, they are considered to be just as infidelic as as many of the Western uh, Westerns are, and that's why you see ISIS today kill them. And Islam versus moderate Muslims versus Islam is a political problem that has a relational solution. Compassion, evangelism in the name uh, of God's Son. That is the answer. So and that's the third thing I encourage listeners is it's not about debating them into heaven. It's about clarifying misconceptions of the true identity of Jesus. Since they have misconceptions of who Jesus is, they have misconceptions of Christianity. When, we begin, when you begin to unfold that, it changes things. And as we're doing this in Jerusalem, Jan, and I want to I close on this note with this, is that we are finding out now more and more that what we're doing in Jerusalem, you know, the 12, we have 12 ministers, Holy Land Missions, we are 501c3 in, in, in America as well, but 12 ministers in Israel. We're recently finding out that what we're doing in Israel is affecting Muslims in America which means less terrorists in America, less fanatical sure. extremists, less hatred. So we are actually securing, and I see, we, I, mean, I'm, I mean literally, Holy Land Missions by the grace of God, Jan, we are actually giving back to you guys in America. We are affecting Arabic-speaking Muslims who have heard about our ministry, who have heard our teachings, uh, or are meeting people in America who have come to Christ in our, in our ministry, who are now leading them to Christ. They're no longer becoming extremists or hateful Americans. So we actually right now helping you, your generation, this coming generation, your children, your grandchildren, to have a safer future. There's many others like us doing it, but we are very few that are doing it in Israel. So we thank you all for your support, and we thank you for your prayers to enabling us to give back to you at America by staking a stand in Israel. And thank you for that. Well, Stephen, do you even have a church? I mean, because you've had such issues with uh, having a building and having it ripped away from you so many times, I can't keep track of it all. Where are you at now as far as a facility to meet in? Jen, thank you for asking. We are in contract in, in a property in Jerusalem, and again, for security reasons right now, I can't mention it until exactly we, uh, we mm -hmm. sign the deal, but we are in contract. And uh, today, thank God, we have the resources for the property. And, 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 and Jan, a lot of your listeners got involved in it. And thank you, Jan, for you and for your willingness to, to stand for the, for the cause in Jerusalem. So right now we're in contract, and the property that we, we are in contract on needs renovation. So we are right now challenging uh, partners to come alongside of us to help us with the construction part of things. And, okay. and our goal is to have an opening, at least a soft, a soft opening, Jan, or a ribbon cutting in early December. So if Christians listening want to come to Israel, want to be a part of our soft uh, ribbon cutting, if those listening want to be a part of, of this construction job um, part, it's, uh, we're challenging folks to come alongside of us. We are needing a million and a half dollars for this. We actually right now have a matching donor that's willing to, to do a matching fund for us all the way up to half a million. So God is just doing so many good things. People mm -hmm. are noticing. We are living in the end days, Jan, and there's no better time to stand for the sake of Jerusalem than now. And it's all because of people like you, Jan, who are standing beside us. You understand? For, pray for the peace of Jerusalem. They shall prosper the blessing. HolyLandMissions.org. You can get a lot more info by going to that particular website, HolyLandMissions.org. 